The following interview was conducted with Sarah Johnson, the Director of the Dining Services for University Housing and Food Services for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, November 19th at her office in Smalley Hall on campus. Welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your parents and where you were born. And well, I was actually uh, born in southern in Louisville, Kentucky, lived in southern Indiana at the time uh, with uh, my family. And my birth parents uh, both passed away when I was quite young. So my sister and I, uh, at the age of um, nine and ages of nine and 13, she's younger, I'm older, um, came to West Lafayette to live with an aunt and uncle. And uh, those are now our parents, Mary and Dick McDowell, uh, both graduates of Purdue. My sister and I are both graduates of Purdue. Uh, I'm married to a Purdue grad. Our, so it's a Purdue is in our family for <laughs> many generations. And uh, many tell us people. about where you went to early school and where we went. To high, did you go to high school here? I went to West Lafayette High School. Came here. I was in junior high when I, we came here. So I went to West Lafayette Junior High High School, uh, and then to Purdue. Uh, did you have any other options that you were going to go or no? Nah, it was pretty much uh, it was pretty much understood <laughs> that I would go to Purdue, and I didn't really have any other aspirations at that time. You know, in those days. We pretty much stayed close to home. And did you live on campus? Or? I did. I lived in the residence halls all four years that which I was in school at Earhart okay. at that time, which was um, had recently been named Earhart Hall. It was origi- uh, called H8 uh, at first. And uh, actually, the I think it was the first year that I was there as a freshman, they um, were, were naming things, and they named the club, the student club, the Itasca Club, after the... Um, the last ship that had contact with Amelia yeah, yeah. Earhart, and um, so it was. It was interesting. Let to me know ask that. you this: before that, they were not naming buildings. Was that uh, for the researchers? I, they, were, they were just what H's or something like Correct, that. Correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. For many years, uh, they were, initially they were named H num- and then a number H eight was was Earhart, uh, and then eventually became uh, named. Now Shreve Hall. I don't think it was ever really H9. I mean, it was numbered that way, but it was named uh, fairly early on. Sure, okay. Uh, but some of the others were later after they uh, had okay. opened. Yeah. What student activities did you participate in, and what was your major? And uh, I majored and in, uh, at that time, it was School of Home Economics uh, with a focus in foods and nutrition, okay. and uh, graduated in that area, then went to the University of Iowa for a dietetic internship to become a registered dietitian. And while I was there, I was actually there for two years to finish my master's. So I got my master's from the University of Iowa in nutrition. Uh, And I laugh and say I didn't ever intend to come back to Purdue. You know, this was home, and I wasn't going to come back here. I was going to go somewhere else. Where did you think you might go? I I don't don't know. How did you happen to pick Iowa? uh, Well, we we could apply for two dietetic internships. and You had to do uh, that after you got the after you Right. In order to become a registered dietitian, you had to do an internship. And... um, so again, it wasn't too far from home. It was in the Midwest. I really wasn't very adventuresome, I guess then, and uh, so that was one one of my choices, and I was accepted there, and it was a good it was sure. a good experience. Who was the dean of the school when you were here? That had been Eva. Uh, Eve Goebel. Um, yes, Eve Goebel. Okay. Yeah, okay. was the dean at that time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. And Stone Hall, of course, was built, wasn't it? Yes, it was here. It was actually called Home Economics Administration Building at that time. It was named Stone Hall a little later. Okay. Uh, but it was called uh, Home Economics Haddam. H A D M was the <laughs> was the acronym. And uh, so I had some. Gosh, I had some wonderful professors in that department in foods and nutrition. Any of them still around? Uh, no, no one around. Um, but I. Do you Let's keep see. in touch with any? Are some of them retired? And well, stuff? Avenel Kirksey is one who is still around. I mean, she's not here physically. She's in Arkansas, but I see her occasionally. And, and they have that lecture series. Right. They have a lecture series in her name. Um, Vianna Bramblett was one of them, and she's no longer living, but she was my um, teacher for um, men, meal management class. Men, uh, meal management? Ooh. Yeah, I can't remember the name, but a class that was very hands-on where you had to plan, prepare meals and things. Did they have the home demonstration houses at that time? Or home, home management, management houses, houses, did they? They did have them. I w- did not have to, to but uh, they did. take that class, but I, they still I did. I interviewed, yeah. um, uh, I've heard that name, and I, uh, 
Mary Louise Foster. She right. was involved with that, right. and uh, so right. I've learned a little bit about that. Yeah. And, uh, she, when, have you interviewed her? Yes, I, I have. I was going to say she'd be an excellent. Yes, I have. I have interviewed her. Uh-huh. I see her from time to time. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. But, the, but they were still in operation when you were here mm-hmm. as a student. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and yep. I graduated in '69. I, I matched bachelor's in '69. Okay. So that was there were a lot of changes happening at that in that sure. period. Sure. What of was time. the campus like at that time? Um, well, it was, of course, a, a pretty conservative campus all along, but that was during the Vietnam era, or be, the beginning, I guess, of the Vietnam era. Um, and so there, was, there were times when you know, the sit-in at the Union and uh, some demonstrations. Unrest. Unrest, that's a good word. Actually, um, when I went to Iowa then, University of Iowa, which is sort of the liberal arts part, the IU, the Indiana <laughs> University of Iowa as compared to Iowa State, but went to the University of Iowa, they were, they were pretty, uh, quite a lot of unrest there. They were burning some buildings, and so that was a little bit of a culture shock for me to go to that kind of campus. We didn't go campus. that far, right? That, that's <laughs> right. We didn't go that far here at Purdue. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, I did. I graduated and uh, got my master's at the University of Iowa, and then um, Helen Townsend, who was the director in this current job that I have, was in this, was in this job, the director of dining services, um, contacted me, actually, to see if I'd be interested in coming back to Purdue and working in uh, food service here. I had uh, been a student employee when I was in school, and she had known my family because my folks uh, worked at Cary Quad when she, with her, and so we had this Your, long, your mother did, then, right? Did she work in, on campus? Um, Dick yeah, McDowell's yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. She and Dick, they, they met at my, they met at Cary Quad in the kitchen, in East Kitchen. And was he working there? And now? he was the head waiter, and she was the dietitian. And uh, Helen Townsend was the manager, the director, of man, food manager. And so, <laughs> no wonder she knew the family. She knew the family quite well, and so she called me and asked if I'd be interested. And I said, "Well, I'll come back and talk to you about it." And I did. And uh, thirty-seven years later, here I am, <laughs> right, right, getting ready to retire from the position that she had at that time. How so. long had she been here for? Quite a while, though. Had she? Uh, yes, she um, she retired in '76, and she came. I'm just working on a project about that. She came in '42, I think, and retired in '76. So now she was a friend, a uh, good friend of Ann Kirkers. Oh, is that Anna, right? Who was oh, the okay. veterinary medical, and that's why I met. Oh, okay. That's where I met her. So I All knew right. who she was. Yeah, and then she died in. Uh, 2006, so yeah. about three years ago. Tell us then, what was your initial thing, and then go on from there. Where were you? Uh, where did you work when you first started? Started there? here. Yeah. Um, I was assigned to Harrison Hall. I was a food supervisor, and I uh, was in that role for two years, and then was uh, promoted to food manager at the Windsor Halls, where I um, was for 13 years, and then uh, at that time. Uh, Dorothy Wicker, who was the director of dining, at that, uh, followed Helen Townsend. Uh, she retired in uh, 86, and uh, so then I was uh, selected to become the director of dining services in okay. 1986. Tell us a little bit about that and uh, what the responsibility and the challenges, et cetera, on that. Okay. Um, well, it was, uh, the responsibilities were for the, the food service in the residence halls, uh, the food operations, the cafeterias, uh, the grills, what we call them grills then, the snack shops that were in several of the halls. Um, so I was responsible for uh, the staffing uh, of those facilities, the ma- professional staffing, uh, coordinating policies, procedures, uh, working with menus, um, special events, and just, um, I, I like to tell people it was anything that had to do with food service could ha- end up in my on my desk because the buck stopped here. And uh, so I had a lot of uh, responsibility there. Who did you report to? Was that was that Ron Fruitt? Um, at that, 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 that time, well, I re- this position reports to the director of residence halls, and okay. at that time it was John Sauter. Okay. Ron okay. was the vice president at that time. Okay. Uh, for housing and food services, so um, John Sauter was my was my boss uh, when I came into this current role. Okay. Um, well, and did you the, interact with a lot with the students? Yes, uh, and that's... you have the biggest... Does, does food service hire the largest contingent of student employees on campus normally? I think that's probably true. Um, okay. We hire... Um, we, we like to have around 1,000 student employees on our payroll, and uh, I think that for any one single area, sure. that's probably... Uh, we rely heavily on, on students. And I've, and I've always uh, enjoyed working with the students. I, I like to say that uh, one of the best parts of working on a college campus is that the students never get any older. They're always the same age. 
And so therefore, we don't get any older either. I'd like to think that. But, right, right. Uh, and I think one of the things I missed when I came into this current role as director is the interaction with students. Because when I was a food manager, when I was a food supervisor, I was working with them daily. More on a one-on-one on one one, basis. Right. right. And so um, throughout the years in this role, I have um, tried to c- incorporate students into projects and planning and input committees um, as well, and just keeping keeping them involved and, and sure. keeping in touch what, with their thoughts. What about programming? Do, do you any spe- do you plan on special programming and uh, that the residence halls have uh, as far as housing? I know, say, at Tarkington, they always have an awards thing at the end of the year. Oh, okay, Something. yeah. Um, most of that's done at the hall level, level okay. at the hall level. But if we do a system event, uh, for example, tomorrow night, Thursday night, is the Thanksgiving dinner. And so that we would coordinate somewhat. Uh, here again, a lot of it's done at the hall level, but we would coordinate that it all happens on the same day sure. what the menu is and, and, and so forth. Uh, but we, we uh, over the years, have had uh, a number of special events. Uh, I remember one that was called Vote, uh, Voiced Opinions Toward Eating. And we did it during an, a presidential election year. And so while everybody in the world was voting for president, our students were voting for their favorite foods. And then How did on, that turn out? And, oh, it was fun. Uh, it was on, let's see, we did it on election day. Then on inauguration day, we served that meal. So the they one voted, that won, huh? The one that won. And, I mean, it was things that we expected, like um, p- spaghetti and chicken strips and, you know, chocolate chip cookies. I don't remember for sure. But uh, but it was just a really neat way to get students involved and in, in, yeah. uh, thinking about do you ever, it. Did you do some surveys with students, too, over time? Oh, we do a lot of surveys. We're in process right now of an, a web-based survey, uh, customer satisfaction survey, uh, that we do every other year in alternate years uh, through our professional organization, uh, NACUFS, the National Association of College and mm-hmm. University Food Services. Uh, and so that will give us a benchmark for how we're doing with uh, customer satisfaction. We also have comment cards uh, that students can fill out. If they drop them in campus mail, they come directly to me, and I always respond to a comment card. If a student signs their name and their email address, I will email them with a response, and I expect the managers to do the same so that we let them know that we read those, we think about them, we can't always do what everybody wants, but we do consider that. We do acknowledge that we've got it, and I think this is good because today everything is so... You're, you're pushing buttons and you don't, don't get any reaction. And I get your newsletter that comes out, and uh-huh. I always read the questions, and it's really nice uh-huh. where they take time to send something in. I thank you very much for oh, the service yeah. that was done and things uh-huh. of that sort. Really the Q&A is, is yeah. really very uh-huh. nice. Yeah. What about the uh, your big uh, overhaul of the dining facilities, that master plan? Yeah. Make a few comments okay. on that. Okay, yeah, that's that. for the last about 10 years, that's really occupied my time heavily, but it's been so exciting. Uh, it's been How did it come about? Uh, well, it actually came about uh, after we opened Hill and Brand. And that was the last that's one. That's the that last new residence hall and opened in 1993, so 15 years ago now. And it had a, a dining service in it, as all of the halls did at that time. Uh, and the students just flocked there. I mean, we had lines out the doors and down the hall and out. Could down. you uh, eat at different halls at that time? Would they, was the card acceptable um, at all cards at, or not? At that time, they uh, we were just beginning okay, the electronic card. Yeah, okay. and so when Hill and Brand opened, we uh, we t- piloted it in a couple of halls. So uh, everybody wanted to come and eat at Hill and Brand because it was new. And so I thought to myself and talked, and I said, you know, we have to do something with the rest of these facilities to make them equally attractive because Hill and Brand can't serve the whole campus. And so I began to think about that and work with a consulting firm that, on master, that does master planning for dining services um, and spent a couple of years really talking about what do we need to do um, to meet the needs in the future, to look down the road, and then to... Um, see what it, what the students are going to want. Right. And so ultimately with the help of the consultants and lots of discussion with, uh, well then Fred Ford who was executive vice president and treasurer with Ron who was the vice president and neither of whom were real sure they wanted to change uh, but John Sauter who was my boss at the time and I were feeling more and more strongly all the time that we had to move forward and be right. aggressive, a little bit aggressive and uh, make some changes so that we'd be ready for the future. And so we decided ultimately that we would consolidate from the 11 cafeterias that we had then, very traditional, straight line, uh, stainless steel college cafeterias, that we would 
uh, consolidate uh, from 11 to 5, and that we could then put our resources into really great state-of-the-art uh, facilities with lots of variety, lots of menu choices that students would like, uh, and really meet the needs of the students, and at the same time be more, uh, be efficient with our resources, that we could, we couldn't afford to remodel and renovate 11 facilities. No. But we could do five. And it make should be really mentioned, great. though, that this is self-supporting. But if you don't get any university funds, that's correct. We are, and, and I tell students that a lot when they ask, "Well, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that?" Well, it's all based on money if you're willing to pay, and uh, so we have to balance. We're like a business. We run, have to run like a business because we are self-supporting, and so uh, we started in. We finally got the go-ahead to really start planning the master plan in '97. Uh, what kind of input did you get from the students? We had um, a and lot also, of input. And uh, also, did this impact with all of the housing mm -hmm. in the community which was going on at that time? Did that have any impact? Well, there was some because students they, who would leave the residence halls to go to apartments, um, one of the things they would say to us is, well, I, you know, I can do my own cooking. I, I don't, you know, this, the food isn't all that great and I don't, you know, I don't like your choices or whatever. Uh, and so we thought that if we could make something better there, that would help the retention. Uh, in the residence halls, and um, and we know indeed that it has in the right. in the long run it has. Um, so we started uh, with Earhart was the first project, first of the projects, and we actually closed the dining service there in the spring of 2000, and started the renovation and reopened in the spring of 2003. With uh, a nice mural in there about Earhart. A, a beautiful, yes, that we used some yeah. things from the archives right. to yeah. make, Very nice. and, it, and it turned out really, really yeah. nicely. And we, oh, you ask about student input. Yes, we had student input throughout. We had um, focus groups. We had surveys. We had what we call input committees where students and staff would sit on committees and we'd talk about what would you like to see in a new facility? What would you like not to see? What do you want to avoid? Um, and we did that for several weeks, uh, getting input from, from that. Uh, and then we had a master plan steering committee uh, made up of, of staff and then student representatives on that. And that steering committee ran for, well, we probably started in 97 and three or four years. And so students would rotate on and sure. on. And so you get different get, views from that. You get different viewpoints. Uh, so we had lots of student input along the way. And one of the real interesting pieces we had was um, the, the, the concern was from students and also from alums in many cases who had lived with us in the past was, I mean you're not going to have a food service in every building? What are we going to do? How are we going to do that? And so with the introduction of the electronic ID card where students could opt, make their own decision to go somewhere else to eat, they began to realize that that wasn't such a bad deal because they could choose what they wanted to do. And so we said, okay, if you have a place to go uh, to eat that you like, uh, how far would you walk to, do, to get there? And overall they told us they would walk two buildings from where they lived, from the residence hall where they lived. And so one of our goals in the master plan was to strategically place these dining courts so that nobody has to walk more than two buildings from where they live. And they can walk farther if they want, and they do, because they walk from McCutcheon to Ford Dining Court. But, but on the average is what you're asking for. Yeah, and if they, don't want, if they want to go right next door, they have a place to go next door. So uh, we, we really worked hard at um, listening to what students say and what they would like to have, and then um, after we had, once we opened the first facility at Earhart, uh, and they saw what what that vision was and what we were doing, then we didn't have any problems after that. They were excited for the next one and for the next one, and uh, they were they had the they had the picture and they knew that it was right. going to be good. Then, but then uh, that was a renovation. But then you went to separate facilities uh, such right. as Ford. Was right, right. Ford, Ford was the second. Okay. And actually, the in the original plan, uh, we were going to renovate Cary Quad. And, and p create a new dining court there. Uh, because we had all this space, we thought, why waste it? But as we got into that project and the details of trying to renovate a place like Cary, which has the, the quadrangle um, right, the design um, to make it handicap accessible, to air condition it, it was going to be huge. And somebody, I think John Sauter, said, you know, we could build a new building for the cost of what it will cost to, to renovate Cary. And so from there, we said, okay, then we, we realigned the master plan and said, okay, we'll build um, this new facility uh, between Cary and Owen. 
and um, it was it was an excellent decision because we could never have had a facility as nice as we have at Ford in a renovation. What did the Ford say when you decided to, how did that come about? Did the Board of Trustees say, of course they had to approve it, but... Right. Yeah. Um, well, it was, um, it, of course it was somewhat unique because they were uh, alums of the university. They hadn't given a big right. gift. Yeah. They had given their lives to the university. And we were thrilled because Fred was the one who actually had signed off on the, on the master plan. And uh, I think they were very thrilled. They were very excited. Having interviewed them, they are pleased with it. Yeah. And, and I, I think the arch... The new arch that's just been that is dedicated uh -huh. is really quite uh -huh. nice. Yeah, but it was a really, a really cute story about that. Is um, at we go to Central Presbyterian Church and so do the Fords. And uh, there were some two students at church recently uh, who were sitting behind Fred and Mary and um, got to talking to them afterward and uh, introduced themselves. And the students said, "Fred and Mary Ford, Fred and Mary Ford. Why does that sound so familiar?" And somebody else standing by said, well, you know, your students, you're on campus, you know, Fred and Mary Ford Dining Court. Oh, my goodness. They, the students were just amazed that there really were people named Fred and Mary Ford. Who really live or living. <laughs> yeah, who were living. So it was really a, I it bet they really got a kick out of and it. And Fred and Mary got a real big kick out of it. That was really neat. Oh. So, so that, the, the Ford Dining Court was just such a great, uh, it was a great decision. I was in, uh, but we'd never done it before. We'd never built a new building that was strictly dining dining facilities, uh, but it, it turned out sure wonderfully. Did, right. And uh, the third project was Windsor. These are all focused all in, within the master plan. Right, this is the master plan, right. Uh -huh. uh, and so Windsor was a renovation. We wanted, I wanted, and people agreed very much, to maintain the Windsor ambiance, the English Tudor architectural style. And uh, so it's, you know, it's very different than the others in its interior and, and its design and its decor. Uh, I call it a warm, cozy feel as compared to the, the contemporary, airy sure. open of, uh, of Ford and now of Wiley. Uh, but I thought it was important to maintain the history. I, I feel very strongly that, that we need to keep some institutional history and right. people should know. And, of course, this is representative right, exactly. of that as well. Right. Um, and then um, the uh, last one was Wiley, what's now the Wiley Dining Court. And here again, it was originally going to be a renovation in Wiley Hall. But um, we just determined that Ford, A, Ford had been so successful as an independent, freestanding, um, that it really was worth uh, a little bit of a delay and uh, getting something built that was uh, new construction. Uh, are there any differences uh, that you added on from Ford versus Wiley, some things that, little en enhancements? One is that uh, South American. Right. Well, the menus are, yeah, there are some differences in the okay. menus. We actually, when we started the design of Wiley, um, we, we said we don't want them to be cookie cutters of one another. We want them to be unique in their own way. But we used a lot of the, the, great, the good things about Ford and then adapted them to make them a little bit unique. So the, the basic layout is kind of circular, and that right. is the same at Ford, uh, the dish machine in, or dish room in the center and, and some of those things. But, uh, the, but it still has a very different decor, very different ambiance, and the menu Sure. Items are, uh, what about are the impact on staff that were in? The, you had a lot more staff in the residence halls, dining mm -hmm. facilities. Right, and and one of the things that that I just spent huge hours on was okay. uh, reassuring staff that, um, and we promised staff that no one would lose their job. That and we had calculated in our financial plan that we over because we were doing this over a period of years, uh, we could with attrition and retirements, we could absorb that loss and and people would have to change jobs and move, you know, it wouldn't be the same job or the same location, but they would have a job. And so um, I spent hours and hours meeting with staff and reassuring them and going through a placement process each time we closed a facility and opened a new one so that everyone had a, an opportunity to express their preferences and that sort sure. of thing. Uh, and so That's we key. We, uh, we were pretty successful in that and we didn't, we lost some people who didn't want to go through it, but uh, for the most part, we didn't put anybody out on the street who sure. didn't make that decision right. themselves. Does the, the student enrollment, is that leveled off a little bit because you don't you know, have fewer? Or do you, do you notice any change in the numbers of students that you now hire, hire with fewer dining oh, facilities? Um, not really because we, we still need... Uh, we need a lot more students in each location. Right. And your hours are different. And too. the hours are different, right. and the menus are different. We're doing uh, a number of things that are either made to order or made 
really fresh, and so it takes more labor to sure. do that than it does to just make a, a pan of something and put it on the line and, and serve it. Right. So uh, the menus are different, the hours are different, a lot of differences in the whole thing. Yeah, and the, you've expanded the hours too, which is, right. which is, which is one of the things that even, because we go to Tarkington a lot, and uh -huh. you know, if you got there close to seven, but now now we have a choice, but also the hours within that have been expanded mm -hmm. to some extent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. What about summer conferences? Any comments on that? Do you, uh, some of the mm -hmm. residence halls are used during the summers, are they not? Right. Uh huh. We have um, we have a lot of of uh, small conferences, sports camps, and small sure. groups, and then uh, we like to have one or two each summer. What we call megas, which are the big uh, five, six, seven thousand uh, groups like Presbyterian Youth Triennium right. and uh, some of those. So um, it's, uh, it's a different type of situation when this conferees come in, uh, and we call all of our staff back. If they're off for the summer or if they're doing something else, we call them back to dining. Uh, and we actually, one of the interesting things we have learned to do with uh, summer conferences is to um, enlist community groups uh, who want to raise funds for their organization their members come and work for us in dining during these conferences because we don't have the student employees that we have during the school year. We need An some extra. of those extra help just during mealtime. And so church groups, Sunday school classes, PEO groups are really uh, big on that, um, Kiwanis and things. And we, um, I send out letters in January and say, are you interested for this summer? And, uh, nice. and then the money goes directly to that organization, not to the individual and then they can use it for their fundraising. Sure. So That's very good. it's kind of a nice community collaboration yeah, thing. Right. Fact Fellow Program, what uh, how is the what has how has that been impacted since most of the dining halls do not have or the residence halls do not have dining facilities. Right. It has it has impacted the faculty fellow program as as I'm sure you know um, yes. in in a lot of ways. Um, and you know I don't, I don't know the answer. I think here again there are a lot of variables there. Today's student is different than when the program started, sure. uh, the dining facilities. Um, we try to encourage the faculty fellows to think of, be creative, think of ways that you can sure. interact with your students. Um, other than just outside, other than just a meal once Just sitting, one. yeah. Right. Uh -huh. um, and as now that we have the, the, all of the dining courts finished and open, uh, we're, we're hoping <laughs> that the, the counts will sort of equalize. We won't have the huge crowds at Ford that we've had uh, and that there'll be a little more opportunity for uh, the FAC fellows and so forth to, yeah. to find those those niches. One of the things but I think it's been good uh, is to have those open houses or something beforehand, which you did for Riley and also for, for the oh, board mm -hmm. we had when we got the cards for the FAC fellows. Mm -hmm. that, that was really, that was nice. Mm -hmm. It worked let out really let well. Let people know what it's like. Yeah, exactly. Sort of and it's, uh -huh. you can do that before school starts or right. during uh -huh. Gold uh -huh. Rush or yeah. whatever then. And I think, you know, the faculty fellow program is a, it's a, been a great program over the years. Uh, but oh, because like your every, father was there. Yeah, Dick he was. was oh, yeah. Oh, and, and Roy was a fact fellow for a while. We we go to McCutcheon, and and it was a great way to meet students. Um, but even the um, functions that they had, you remember years ago, we, they had winter whispers, the dinner dances, and uh -huh. uh, Jim and I would go to the dinners, and then the, and then they say, "Well, will you be joining us for the dance?" Because the bus would take them, uh -huh. and he'd say, "Well, we'll we'll be there later." <laughs> <laughs> right, but and, and of course that was, and you know those dinner dances. And Vern were, Freeman, you know, was a fact a fact fellow over yeah, in Tarkington, and he came and, and and sometimes I think he went to the dances. Is that right? Yeah, yeah right. we didn't go to the dances yeah. very often, you yeah. know. But uh, <laughs> but that was a wonderful tradition, the dan the dinner dances, and of course from even from the early years, the forties and the fifties, and oh, into yeah. the seventies. And, you know, it would be interesting to know what students today would think of that, but uh, they wouldn't know how to act in many cases. Uh, the um, diversity, how, uh, a couple comments on diversity. Uh, um, how, you we have, have programs we have, and things of that sort. We do that. have, uh, residence halls has, we actually have a, a co coordinator of uh, diversity and community uh, relations, James Foster, is doing a lot of work with that, as uh -huh. well as a, a fellow in our EQ and Resources Department. And they have a program of um, that's integrated with dining, particularly at Windsor, which where they do international dinners and an international theme dinner uh, once a month or one, two or three times a semester uh, to show students what what that food might be like culturally and so forth. Um, but I think the other thing, and and we do a lot of menu items that are cult diverse, which is good. Uh, international foods, vegetarian, vegan foods. 
Uh, I mean, things that we would never have even thought about 10, yeah. 15, 20 yeah. years ago. And also, the, in the community, there's been re restaurants that have opened right. up. Right, uh huh, uh huh. Uh, so Windsor has a, an international line station that does, uh, today was Cuban and, Mex and Hispanic. They do um, East Indian. They do Mediterranean. They do Greek. Um, we have a Asian food in, in a couple of locations. Of course, we have pasta and Italian food. And we have the churrascaria in Wiley for the Brazilian. So really try, we really try to be very diverse in, in the things that we have. But the other part of it is that our, we have a, a very diverse employee base, uh, in our well, both in our student employees, but also in our regular employees, um, and it, and it's really interesting and and makes it uh, very nice. We visited some other schools in the Midwest a couple of years ago as we were preparing to open Wiley, and came back and and I really hadn't thought too much about it, but the staff that went with me said, "Wow, Sarah, did you notice how they didn't have any diversity in their staff at all? They were just all women, Midwest, white." Uh, I mean, it was just very interesting to see yeah, yeah. that difference compared to our uh, situation where we really have a very diverse campus. And I know it's, it's not as diverse as some people would like, but... But it is quite, it is quite and I think I these think international menus and things of that sort just add, add to it, mm -hmm, enhance it, mm -hmm. I think. We had a, a guest at Wiley Dining Court last week who came there because he's from Brazil. He's a postdoc, I think, or a visiting scholar, maybe. Uh, and had heard about the churrasca, and he came and, and told us that it was very authentic, and he loved it, and he brought, came back and brought some friends. Super. That's so, what you know, we need. That's what we, we want. We need all that PR. Want, that's right. That's right. Uh, now, a couple of awards for the housing and boots. You got the, you, know, you talk about these, a presidential service award from the Association of College University, and you were, you were the third person to serve as chair of the uh, food internship committee, right? And, and they highlighted that in the oh. announcement. Oh, okay, yeah. The NACUFS, which is our professional organization, um, has a food service management internship that um, is a summer. It's a summer internship. And Helen Townsend, who was my predecessor here two generations before, was uh, instrumental in starting that internship. And uh, we Purdue is the only school in the country that has continually hosted students every summer since that started in 1960, I think it was. Wow. And uh, so, and she was, Helen was the chair of that committee for many years. Dorothy Wicker was the chair when she was, and then I was the chair for many years. So all three of us have, have been really involved in, in that um, program and in that committee. Uh, and it has brought us students, and the students come from other schools. They're not Purdue students who intern with Our us. Are Purdue students not, not eligible? They can they apply, could, but they would go somewhere else. Oh, they go somewhere else, yeah. okay. Not they wouldn't, uh -huh, wouldn't intern here. And so uh, we have some staff members, and I've had staff members who, who were interns. And uh, so it's just been a really great um, professional growth opportunity, and it was another way that I had of being involved with students. Right. And staying in touch and also with at, the, at the association at the national level too, and at the national right at the national level, and then meeting other professionals, other colleagues around the country right. uh, through this organization, and so it was uh, it was a great experience. Is there a limit on how many can apply, and do they get money or uh, the host school will has to uh, provide a room and board and a stipend for them while they're there? Is it for the whole summer? And it's for eight weeks mm -hmm, in the summer. Yeah. And what we're doing is introducing them to college food service as a career path, uh, which isn't always promoted at the academic departments. Right. Uh, and so we're just trying to get them th to think about this as a career and show them what it's like and what we do. What, what's, what's, going what's, what's going on. What's going on. Sure. Yeah. And, and we're also doing that now with the Foods and Nutrition Department. We have an agreement with the uh, Coordinated Undergraduate Program in Dietetics, uh, and each fall semester, we have dietetic interns now out in our facilities. We have six right now uh, from that program who are studying to be dietitians but learning about food service management. Right. And I teach um, four of their, I teach four sessions for them uh, of topics that are applied to management. That's and uh, sounds good. I really enjoy that. Yeah, I, like, I like that part. Then the other was that Best in Show from the Food Management Magazine. Yes, and, that uh, was. And this recognizes Purdue's efforts to revitalize dining for its students and staff. That's your quote there. That, yeah, 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 that was so exciting. The magazine, that's the, the magazine up there on the wall. In the oh, okay. Frame. That's the cover. I was a cover girl. <laughs> good for you. Um, they have this well, food management is a magazine for what's called non-commercial food service. So hospitals, schools, colleges, business, not restaurants, not the commercial sector. And so this magazine each year has a best concepts competition. 
you nominate yourself, you can submit, or somebody can nominate you, but they have different categories. And um, in 2006, I had um, entered us in several categories thinking that we would get some, some recognition in one if I did a lot, you know. And at the same time, uh, the consultants that we worked with on all these projects had alerted food management to what we were doing and that we were making this, they had this master plan. And so they, the magazine was interested in doing an article about us, and uh, so they named us the best in show of their best concepts uh, competition. So we were uh, number one in the country for a year. Wow. <laughs> Very good. Uh, because of, and it was all related to the master plan and and the uh, makeover That's of very what we nice. had done. That. What I call re-engineering our food service. Right. Um, a lot of schools around the country are doing things like this, but very few, A, are as large as we are, and very few are doing everything, changing everything. The complete, the complete, complete thing that we have done. Sure. Uh, so that makes us kind of unique in that sense. Yeah. That's and, good. Uh, so it's um, very exciting. Tell us about family. Uh, uh, well, I'm I married think. to Roy. Yeah, who's also uh, very involved in Purdue, and uh, you so met you met at Purdue. We met at Purdue. We actually were introduced in this uh, by Nelson Parkhurst, who was the registrar at that time and was Roy's boss because Roy was in the registrars, and Sue Graham, who was the residence hall manager while at Windsor, where I was the food manager. Uh, the two of them were related by marriage, and so they decided that Roy and I should meet. And so we met in uh, we were introduced in uh, Wood Hall dining room at Windsor Halls. And um, it went from <laughs> went there. Went from there, and right? It went from there. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, uh, do you still participate in the alumni? So, do you do any alumni activities at all? Being um, both, both of you being Purdue grads? Not really. So we haven't gotten too much involved in that. We, but you're more involved with the musical organization. With the band. Right. Yeah. yeah. Roy's, of course, the announcer for the marching band. Uh, I'm an advisor for Tau Beta Sigma, which is the band sorority. He's an advisor and an alum for Kappa Kappa Psi, which is the band fraternity. And so that's really one of the ways we stay in touch with students. And, and also, I'm going to athletics. You're, you're pretty involved in that, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Always going to bas- basketball and football games. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes volleyball. <laughs> so we, we love Purdue, and we're going to stay around in Purdue in retirement. We're not going anywhere. We're, I was going to ask you what your post-Purdue plans are. Yeah, we're, uh, we're staying here. We're... Um, you know, volunteer community organizations, community activities, campus organizations. And he helps uh, out, I know, at the Visitors Information right, Center. Uh-huh. Right, uh-huh. And I was thinking that might be, I might be doing that, too. I think that would be a fun thing sure. to do, just to see yeah, people get, and stay right. in touch with things. Uh, work in the yard when I feel like working in the yard. Uh, cook at home, which I never do now. <laughs> and, I'll be over. And, uh, uh, so, uh, look, I'm looking forward to You going to do that. any travel, do you think? And travel. Okay. Yeah, we have a trip planned for this summer. Uh, to the uh, Rhine River cruise. Ooh, that will be and, nice. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. That's our celebration cruise. And then next summer, in 2010, uh, we're going to go on a trip to, to the Passion Play in Oberammergau, Germany. Oh, that will be nice. With uh, Gordon Mork, who is... Who's uh, been doing that for he's some, done it. some We years. went actually went with him in 2000, and we wanted to go back one more time in 2010 to see it, because they do it every 10 years. Sure. So uh, those are our two big trips on the horizon. Uh, oh, those will sneak in, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, how about an outstanding event? Got one of those in, uh, in your life, and also a, a favorite Purdue tradition. I think of any of those. Mm, an outstanding event. Uh, well, p- personally, I guess, and from my my career and my job, I think, uh, of course, the master plan has to stand out as something that I I didn't ever expect to be involved in. And uh, when we opened that first facility. Um, I told somebody it must be sort of like birthing a baby because I've never done that, but it, it must be like that because of it's painful, but it's exciting and, and uh, just so rewarding and, and so great to see the, the student reaction. Uh, so I, I think from my career standpoint, that was just absolutely the pinnacle of, and the completion of the plan sure. uh, that we were able to complete it. I Under, on your watch, and uh, on my watch, yeah. and uh, if we were starting it today, I don't, we couldn't afford to do. You know, I don't think it would ever happen, just for a variety of reasons. But we're done with it, and and I'm really, really Good. happy with that. What's yeah. your favorite Purdue tradi- uh, tradition? Got one of those? Oh, I have. I guess I have to say the Boilermaker Special and the, that the Reamer Club and all the things that they do, the spirit that they have, and and the fun that it is when other people see the train. 
And, and they forget to honk and, and I they, honk. Yeah, yeah, and uh, how unique it is. That's right. To yeah. uh, to Purdue. Right. And any uh, in closing, any comments that you'd like to share that you think of, uh, or something I didn't ask, anything that comes to mind. Um, well, I think uh, you know I I am prejudiced, but I think Purdue is a great a great institution. It's a great place to work. It's been a great career. Uh, great students, great great staff, dedicated staff, and uh, I wouldn't change any of that for anything. I just think it's a, and the and the history that that is Purdue that accompanies it that's that right. is is just so amazing. Uh, I hope one that in retirement I can do some more reading and read some of those Purdue books that are on our shelf that I've never read, but I know we'll are put really it on good. our schedule. Yeah, right. right. Okay. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sarah. Oh, I really appreciate well, I, this. I Thanks. appreciate so it too. It was so much fun and. I'm